Today is Monday, February 9th, 2015, and this is Episode 2 of Inside the Mixing Vault. Here are your hosts, producer, mixer, engineer, Nick Battistone, and producer, mixer, and engineer, Louis Millard. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to episode two of Inside the Mixing Vault. I am producer, mixer, and engineer, Nick Battistone. And I'm producer, mixer, and engineer, Louis Millard. And today we are going to have a discussion about finding what's best for you in your situation. Um, a lot of people are starting out, putting together home studios, and really confused on the direction in which they should go with their gear purchases, with what microphones they should use, uh, what interfaces, what software. And I know personally, I get a lot of emails on the subject uh, from artists a lot looking for which way they should go, how they should build their studio to get the right results. But really, there is no blanket answer. So Lewis and I decided that this week we would do a little bit of talking about finding what's right for you in your situation. Now, I know we were talking earlier before we did this um, about the different types of situations. So I'm going to kick it over to Lewis and kind of let him give you a little bit of a a fill-in on what types of situations, uh, whether you're a musician in a band, a hip hop artist, and what things you should start to think about when putting together a home studio. Yeah, man. So obviously earlier on, me and Nick were, as Nick said, we were discussing different types of scenarios that people can get into such and such, for example, drummers, uh, producers, engineers, uh, rappers, bands. And we were talking about um, like the sort of setups you can get nowadays for a reasonable budget, uh, there's quite there is a lot out there, man. That you can get definitely yeah, for cheap, definitely cheap prices. Well, obviously I'm not saying cheap because it's not cheap when it comes to uh, building a studio or whatever. But at the end of the day, you if you've got a budget there, we uh, me and Nick thought of two. We both got different views on this. Uh, right. We've both picked a a setup each, which obviously because I'm from the UK, I've gone with pounds, so mine's going to cost a thousand pounds. And Nick has a thousand dollars, right? Thousand dollar budget. We both basically got got onto the internet and we went online and we found out what we can get for that sort of money because, it, like, you can get a reasonable setup for a thousand, a thousand dollars or pounds. Um, mm-hmm. But basically, the thing is, I think my one is for individuals, like rappers, producers, right? You couldn't really record a band on my one, but obviously, you got to understand the more you want to do the more money you've got to spend. Right. And, you know, that's the thing, too, is um, even though, you know, with a limited budget, you have to decide what's most important, whether you need multiple inputs or whether you need uh, a higher quality microphone for vocals or you're more concerned with making sure that you have great sounding monitors for making beats. Uh, You know, you have to really look at what your situation is and base the decisions that you make off of what your needs are, just not because you want to spend the money thinking you're going to get the best quality out of something. Because as we've always said before, you know, a a great tool in the wrong hands is not going to give you a great result. So, you know, obviously knowing your situation, knowing your skill level and being willing to invest in the things that are right for you and your needs is going to end up giving you the best results results in the long run. Now, one thing I do want to add too, because I guarantee you people are going to say this because Lewis and I had this discussion before we started putting together our individual setups is yes, we realize obviously there is a value difference between a thousand pounds <laughs> and a thousand dollars. Yes. We know that that equates to a different amount of money. But one thing that Lewis had brought to my attention um, early on in us working together is that a lot of the audio equipment that everybody commonly uses nowadays does come from companies based in the U.S., and those prices are different. Um, You know, what costs $100 in the U.S. might cost him 120 pounds in the U.K., which equates to like... Yeah, right, exactly. Plus shipping if you have to have it sent over. So we figured that setting the budget at a thousand pounds and a thousand dollars would help offset that difference between the higher prices that are common in the UK with a lot of these audio products. So before anybody starts blasting us about setting our budget, 
it's at the same with different currency values. We know, and we did this for a reason to, again, help offset some of the price differences between the two countries. Yeah, so. one thing I was going to bring up with you, actually, Nick, we spoke about products before, remember, like, um, for example, when we're speaking about the, the Digirack. Right. You was telling me you can get one of them for $300 there, man. I was like, wow, like, you're looking yeah. about £500 here. And obviously, that's quite a big difference. I mean... Yeah, so, yeah. That- like you say, people need to... We, we thought about this before we've done it. It's not just a case of, you know, he's... I've got more than Nick, obviously. <laughs> no, right, that. right. We thought about it before we've done it. So, yeah, boom. Yeah, and, you know, that actually brings up a really good point now that you mentioned a Digirack, too. Because, yeah, um, the 002 from uh, Avid DigiDesign, uh, one of their first uh, professional rack mount uh, Firewire interfaces that they made uh, available on the prosumer level... Uh, um, is a great piece. I still tell people all the time if they're on a very limited budget, they need multiple inputs, uh, they need at least four XLR uh, mic pre's, and they have a very limited budget. I always say, hey, you know what? Get online, go on eBay, and check out the 002 from, from Avid DigiDesign. It's a great piece. Um, I mean, there's a loyal following of people who have used those things for years and love them. Um, and you can get them on eBay for like 150 bucks um, here in the U.S., that is. But again, as as Lewis said, you know, that price is significantly different. But the one thing to look at, and you should never really, I guess, turn your head, excuse me, turn your head away from this option is think about used gear. Um, you know, in, in my personal situation, uh, you know, I work out of a hybrid room right now. My mix room, you know, has a console and analog gear. So a lot of the stuff that I buy is used, um, you know, really aside from my converters and, you know, um, like monitors and things of that nature, uh, uh, the vast majority of stuff that I buy is used and significantly old. You know what I mean? I think the, you know, the average age of something in my studio is about 25, 30 years old. So, you know, don't shy away from used gear. Um, obviously, you know, when it comes to things like interfaces, you want to make careful decisions when buying used in that regard, just because um, things have gotten better with digital audio over the years. So, um, you know, the 002 that I mentioned from Avid is great, but, you know, a a modern interface from Apogee, uh, Universal Audio, or even the newer Avid stuff, um, you know, is going to have better converters. Um, now with the standard Avid interfaces for Pro Tools like the Mbox uh, third generation, they now now are 24 bit 192 kilohertz whereas the firewire version is 2496 so you know that's one thing to keep in mind but used gear is a great option to save money yeah the the other thing as well with that is if you're buying like a modern interface and you're buying a used one ask yourself why the person doesn't want it anymore it might be because it's not any good it might be because they don't no longer need it but if you're going to get used like i'd say obviously nick uses a lot of vintage stuff obviously vintage is 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 a big look man like it's it's decent Mm -hmm. you can get some really good gear and vintage but if you're going to buy a used interface i mean there's no if what i'm trying to say is if there's 150 pounds or 150 dollar interface should i say uh, don't be. I wouldn't buy that used. I mean, if you get right. a new one, obviously you uh, you, you got to pay the full price, but the, you're going to get a warranty and stuff with that as well. So obviously, if anything right. goes wrong with it, that's fine. But if you're just buying it off eBay or, or any other any other site, not done promoting any of them, just to let you know. But right, if sure. Any online auction site, I'll say, if you're buying them off there, you don't get any warranty or anything with it because obviously the product you have to register it as. An owner, obviously, the original person's already done that, so the warranty's not there anymore. Right. But obviously, if it's vintage, if it's been working for 30 years, the chances are it's going to keep on working. Right. And especially if it's well taken care of, too. You know, that's one of the things, at least about good quality vintage gear, which, you know, I don't think this particular podcast is a, a great platform uh, today for talking about vintage mm-hmm. gear, uh, just because, you know, a lot of the people that are, are listening to this, looking to buy their first home studio setups, aren't really going to be in the market for vintage gear, nor would I suggest that they get in the market for vintage gear right now. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the point. Anything that's, you know, 30 years old, um, and is a good quality piece that, 
is you know well known and has a great reputation chances are it was owned by a good studio or somebody who knows and respects the gear and has taken care of it and serviced it and kept it maintained and clean over the years um but lewis made a great point you know especially with interfaces um Always a great idea if you have the budget, obviously, to buy them new, uh, just because, as he mentioned, there are warranties. And here in the States, uh, you know, I deal with Guitar Center a lot. I've been dealing with them for, you know, almost 10 years now. Um, they offer their um, extended coverage, their I don't know if they still call it a performance guarantee, PG, whatever the hell they call it nowadays, but it's like insurance and they really do cover against everything. And you can only get that on new gear. So, you know, it might cost you an extra, you know, $30 or $50, $100, depending on how long you want the additional coverage um, and how much the item was. But, you know, it even covers against things like dropping it on the floor, spilling a drink on it. You know what I mean? If you have a, a Avid M box and you spill a cup of coffee on it and short the thing out, you can send it back to them and they'll send you a brand new inbox. So, you know, that's a really good option to have. But again, you can only get that through companies that offer that you know, on the retail side and on new equipment. So, you know, another reason to consider buying new and keeping, you know, your budget available for those options should you decide that you want them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know, again, it's a risk. It, you always can save money by buying used on anything, but clearly the risk there is, is it going to keep working? Is it going to work long enough for my needs? Um, is it going to break? Are there going to be issues that I don't know about? So it's always buyer beware when you buy used. Also, I'll tell you, I've done it before myself, so I know the situation. Don't ride on everyone else's hype, man. Because like, I've yeah. had it before where everyone's like, yeah, this is sick. And then you get it. And it, you think that it's going to be like a revolutionary thing that's going to just change the whole fi- whole studio and make it just sound like it's coming out of Dre's studio. Well, going on everyone else's hype always puts you in a letdown situation, man. Right. I mean, I can personally say this. Um I don't think I've ever listened to a piece of gear or a plug-in um, or a microphone, whatever, and said, this is going to completely change my sound. You know what I mean? I don't really think that there is that one piece of gear out there that's going to completely change your sound for the better on its own without the skill and knowledge on how to use it. There Let is, me say there that. There is, Nick. There is. There is. It's There's called... Gr- they're called Nick Batterstone and Lewis Millard. Yeah, well, right, exactly. That's a, but that's the point that I'm trying to make, though. You know what I'm saying? Is is it's the skill and the experience and the person using the tool. So I know we mentioned this before when we were talking about plugins, but you know the same thing holds true with analog gear, microphones, interfaces, whatever. No one piece of gear is going to take a awful sounding recording and make it sound great. It's up to you to learn how to use the tools that you have and master your craft and become great at using them. And the more you learn, I mean, believe me, um, uh, you know, uh, John Feldman, um, a great producer engineer, um, has done a lot. Um, you know, he's also in the band Goldfinger, uh, for those of you who know who that is. Um, but he's done a lot of great records over the years. And I remember one story about when they were recording the used, uh, album. I think it was their, their first record. They actually did a lot of vocal recordings on an M box, you know, out at the beach, um, just, you know, taking a laptop and an M box and recording while they were at the beach. You know what I mean? So a great engineer can make a great recording with, you know, basic, cheap, affordable gear, you know? So again, that's the whole point of why we're doing the mixing vault, why we're sharing this information with everybody, why we're putting together the mass amount of tutorials and articles and, you know, Q and A's and all this stuff that we're doing here is to try and help everybody, learn more and learn from each other because you know over the years that we've been doing this we've been fortunate enough to learn from talented people and people who are willing to pass on what they've accumulated over their careers and we feel like we're at a position now where we've gained a lot of knowledge over our years of doing this that we want to start sharing some of it with you and believe me the learning never stops if you care about audio and you love doing this you learn new things every day and i know 
every week I'm watching tutorials from other people, listening to every seminar and lecture and interview that I can get my hands on, reading every book and magazine still to this day after 14 years, just because I love it and I want to continue learning. So I guess we could take that now and segue that into our ideal setups for a limited budget. Now, again, this is our personal preference where neither one of us are saying this is what you should go out and buy. Our challenge I'm excited about this, Nick. Yeah, man, me too. Because here's the cool thing about it. Neither one of us knows what the other person has in their shopping cart. We each Yeah, and that's what makes it, I think, uh, an interesting thing because um he went on to what what is the the company again? Dolphin? Is that it in the UK? Dolphinmusic.co.uk, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and again, I went on to guitarcenter.com, and earlier today we went and you know we talked about this when we were preparing for this podcast, and we each set our budgets and we went online to our respective music retailers in our countries and built online shopping carts um, for a thousand dollars and a thousand pounds, respectively, of course. Um, and, and put together setups that we would have chosen for our specific needs and for what we thought was best for, again, the needs of ourselves. If we were just starting out today and we only had $1,000 or £1,000 to spend, what we would buy for our needs. Now, granted, we're both mix engineers, but we also do a little bit of recording. We both do music of our own as well. Um, so, again, I think for, for the most part, can we say that both of ours are really geared towards solo musicians, not for full band setups? I mean, I think I know you mentioned that with yours, and I know that's kind of the same with mine, but I think that was really the whole the whole theme of what we were doing, right, is is looking for yeah, limited but, inputs. Yeah. Yeah, but also you can you can do acoustic tracks with the stuff we've got. Like, so if you're just uh, not just a rapper necessarily, because people always think that like the sort of stuff that we're going to be saying about now is just for hip hop. No, you can definitely use if you're doing your own acoustic tracks. I mean, if you're a solo artist and you're making you play your own guitar and you do your own vocals. I mean, you can you can do that with this setup if you want to program a beat, or you can get some bongos or a cajon. Or yeah, mm-hmm. so basically, I'm just saying it's not just for one genre. You can definitely right. use this on other types. Right, and you know too, um, even with interfaces that have just to mic pre's, there are ways that you can record drums uh, very effectively, actually. Uh, there's there's one method called the Recorder Man setup. Uh, you know, I strongly suggest you hop on YouTube or Google and, and search the Recorder Man drum recording technique. Um, you and that a tutorial on that now, Nick. Yeah, I know. It's going to come in the future. <laughs> Fortunately, most of the stuff that I do is on is on the mixing and editing and post-production side of it so um yeah but maybe in the future i will for sure uh but yeah i mean you know it's definitely not geared towards one genre um it's not geared towards um you know just vocals or just guitar um i'm pretty sure and at least i'm assuming that both of our interfaces offer options for plugging in guitars direct uh offer some sort of um amount of xlr mic preamps and of course uh have some additional options for connecting headphones and monitors and and things of that nature so again we tried to build a basic home studio setup from scratch with a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds and these setups should typically include your interface your main vocal microphone a pair of studio monitors and a pair of decent headphones for basic recording and audio editing um, and again referencing now also we tried to leave a little bit left over in the budgets for buying the miscellaneous cables we know that's an expense and i know one of the things that we talked about too uh because lewis in in his initial and again i don't know what he has in his cart yet (laughs) but I know he was he was putting all monster cable in in his in his package at first, or at least he was mentioning that he was but going was to. Was I though, Nick? Uh, was I actually well, doing yeah, that? Well, yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess right until you reveal what your card is and the big reveal here in a minute. But um, you know, that's one of the things that I know that I mentioned is yeah, for your mic cable, I would absolutely buy a quality cable from Mogami or from Monster. Um, you you definitely when it comes to your signal chain going from your input 
into your computer, uh, you know, f- from the microphone to the interface to the computer, I would definitely get the best quality cables you can. But I would not spend, if you have a very limited budget, I would not spend $60 a piece on cables to connect your monitors, at least right away. You know what I mean? At least right away. When you have more money in the future, definitely upgrade it because I, I mean, I think I can tell a difference, uh, you know, after all this time listening to bad cables, you just hear that intermittent noise. You can hear noise and bad cables. Definitely, um, man, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's certainly a thing to consider, but, you know, obviously, if you're on a limited budget, you know, make the concessions where you think you you should or can. Um so that's that's really where we went with it. Interface, microphone, monitors, and headphones. Uh, and again, we tried to leave uh, an adequate amount left over for uh, cabling. And I, I'm i looking at Lewis via our uh, web chat right now, and he keeps giving me a look that he's probably added more things into his cart than what I've listed. So I'm starting, <laughs> I'm starting to get a feeling that he has more than an no interface, nonsense. microphone, monitors, and headphones um, in his. But that's at least what i have in mind so i'll give you that much um so without any further ado do you want to go ahead and just roll into uh our big our big exciting reveal of course on what it is that we've chosen for our individual you want me to go in with it yeah, yeah what's up okay you want to so you want me to go in with it you want me to tell you what i've got on mine or we do yeah just do mine first and yeah yeah go right, ahead hit so, me okay so i'll start off i've got an interface, right? It's the Roland UA55 Quad Capture. Ah. Now, obviously, you need to... I haven't got time to fully go into the uh, specs and stuff, but, yeah, it's got a uh, two-input two XLR, but it's a combo, so you can also put a standard jack plug in there. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's got your monitor out, your headphone in. So the base, it's it's a really good quality interface, actually. It's got some good uh, preamps on it as well. Mm-hmm. I've actually I've used it before. Obviously, I wouldn't list anything that i haven't used mm-hmm. so yeah that's that's my interface uh microphone i've got the new Rode nt1 no. i knew that was coming i you knew, knew you were choosing that one, that one. Right? yeah i yeah. knew that was happening i do lo- i love Rode, man the the road mics are the i've got the the original nt1 which is uh, but i told road the other day myself it's the best one the best microphone they've done is the original nt1 but the new one new one's still pretty cool man it's better than the nt1a that's for sure and like Rode microphones are just great quality, and I hate to say it, but quite a lot of people compared it to the Newman U87. Mad. Mm. So that's my microphone. Uh, studio monitors. I've got the Rocket Five. Okay. Rocket R. Like, no, yeah, KRK RP Five G3 Active. Yeah. Jeez. So obviously you have to buy them individually. So obviously mm-hmm. I had to put two in there. I have a standard a standard microphone stand, which obviously you can pick them up for like ten dollars or ten pounds. I have also got a control surface, the cool <laughs> the cool nano control. <laughs> oh, USB. seriously, okay. Alright. Yep, that's a good controller, man. Good call. I have the SE Electronics. FRX reflection filter. <laughs> oh, come on. This is all still in the price, man. See, maybe I'm starting to rethink this uh, price difference between pounds and dollars here because I'm thinking you're getting a lot more juice out of this squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah. Nah, dude. Now, nah, now, nah, this is going to be a madness, man. I have Presonus Studio One Professional Version 2. DAW. Okay. Boom. That DAW, man, Personas gave me that the other day, or hooked me up, whatever you want to call it. That is some mad software, man. It's like, if you want an equivalent to Pro Tools that are a lot cheaper, go for that, man, because you can make beats in that. You can obviously record, edit, mix, master. You can do everything in there. And obviously the version 2 is the best best one they've done, the newest one. And also you get loads of good plugins with it. If you know what I mean. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. that's my that's my cart, Nick. What have you got, man? Now, did you put headphones in yours, bro? There's a hundred pound left for head. Oh no, yeah, no, no, yeah, no. There's there's a hundred and fifty pound left, man. Okay, so, okay, cool. Obviously, fifty pound for your mic cables, yeah, and go yeah. and get the go and get some headphones from uh, Vibe Audio. You can get them from VibeAudio.co.uk. Get them anyway, yeah, whether man, you're getting definitely. any of this or not. Just go to Vibe. 
obviously you've probably seen on Twitter, Facebook, we've got our own Vibe headphones, Mix and Volt ones. Well, yeah, I've got mine. Nick's waiting on his, but yeah, some madness, man. But yeah, that's. My I'm car. very Nick, excited for mine to get here too. By the way, I just want to. <laughs> I just want to restate that I'm very anxiously waiting for my uh, Vibe <laughs> headphones to get here because I've, you know what I mean. We've we've been very uh, excited about um, you know checking these these new products from Vibe out, and if they're anything like the other stuff that they have out, I I, I know that it's it's going to be amazing. So I'm very excited for that. Just uh, one more thing, Nick. These headphones. I'm actually the the headphones I'm talking about uh, for the studio. I'm actually using them on this podcast right now. They mm-hmm. are the flyovers. Go and check them out, man. They've got obviously you can use the wired and they're Bluetooth. But I, I'm not joking when I tell you they're 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 a Beats by Dre alternative, man. Check them. Hell yeah, definitely, man, definitely. So, all right, here's where I'm at with my shopping cart. Again, this comes from GuitarCenter.com, and I mention this because the pricing for each item is dependent on where you buy these things from, especially in the States. Um, You know, Guitar Center has good sales a lot, um, so you can get stuff for... A significantly better price. So definitely keep an eye on what Guitar Center is doing because they always have great sales. And this is not a commercial for Guitar Center. I'm just saying I know they're the, one of the, if not the largest music retailer in the U.S. and they always have great prices. So if you can't fit everything from my shopping cart into a thousand dollar budget from your local music store, I don't want to get any complaint emails because the prices <laughs> are different. So this is Guitar Center's price. I'm just saying that, you know, right out. But anyway, starting off for an interface, I have the Avid Pro Tools Mbox 3, the uh, Mbox Pro third generation, I should say, pro, which you know. is an Avid interface, obviously. It gives you uh, several ins and outs as far as XLR uh, mic pre's and quarter inch ins and outs for line ins, guitar ins, etc. There's also digital I.O. capability with that as well, and it is a FireWire interface capable of 24-bit, 190 92 kilohertz recording and mixing so a 24 192 interface and i should also mention it comes with pro tools so <laughs> that is another great advantage if you're trying to get uh, into pro tools this is a great way to do it because now granted this took up a little over half of my budget right here but for those of you who yeah i mean the, for those of you who are are trying to get into audio and you have any experience with pro tools already um, you know as it's kind of you know become one of those staples in the industry that a lot of people use it not saying anything against any DAWs i've just been a pro tools person for years that's, next that's what week. i'm comfortable with yeah that's exactly that's next week's topic is DAW so i've been comfortable with pro tools for over a decade so that's what i put in my cart um so yeah again great piece and it's currently on sale i see from guitar center so if you're interested in that definitely go check it out right now uh read all about the specs and the features because it includes a whole ton of stuff that i really think you guys will like so check that out so for my microphone I actually chose one that I'm not personally familiar with using. Uh, However, I'm familiar with other microphones made by this manufacturer, and I've loved everything that they've done so far. So I chose the SE Electronics Magneto, or Magneto, however you want to pronounce it, Studio Condenser Microphone. Uh, It's a great budget. It's a definitely versatile microphone that would be great on vocals. Uh, You can use it on acoustic guitars. Um, You can use it on uh is an ambient mic for a guitar amp if you want i mean the options are, are definitely wide open um and it's it's i think a good entry level budgeted workhorse i think it's a great mic and everything from se that i've heard and personally used over the years has been great so i expect nothing short of a quality microphone from the magneto yeah um, yeah so I'll moving on to my myself, monitors yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a. I, that's why I was trying to hint around when we were talking. I was like, "Yeah, what do you think of some of the the entry level <laughs> SE stuff?" Because uh, I was trying to get a feel for it and see what you thought. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, for my monitors, conveniently, I also chose the KRK Rocket Powered Five G3s. Oh yeah. Um, just because the the Rocket uh, the RP fives or the Powered Fives have been a great monitor that is seen in even some very large and high end studios. I've seen a lot 
lot of producers and engineers uh, working in multi-million dollar rooms who bring a pair of Rocket 5s with them just because they're a great way to reference. They're, they're not exaggerated. They're not, um, you know what I mean? They're not anything that's, that's super inflated or inaccurate. You know what I mean? I think they give you a very realistic picture of, of what the sound is going to sound like in the real world. Um, and that's why I've always liked them, at least uh, as a reference, especially in production. Uh, I know hip hop guys love them a lot too. I've got them. Um, now to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I know you love them a lot. Um, I've used them in several studios, so I, I definitely dig them. Now, I closed off my list with the Audio Technica ATH M45 Studio Monitor headphones. Um, and I tell you why. I've had a pair of ATH headphones that um, I can't exactly remember the model number, but if you give me 30 seconds here in a minute, I'll tell you. Um, I've had this pair of Audio Technica headphones for like 10 years. And these things have been shoved in every bag, road case, rack possibly conceivable they've probably flown over a hundred thousand miles in the carry-on bags on my flights and everything else and have been beaten up in every studio i've worked in and these things still sound great they're still in great shape and they've held up over the years and again it's it's another headphone that it's a good entry-level piece for recording um and for referencing back your mixes and doing some production and considering that they're a closed over-the-ear headphone um um, you know what I mean? You should get enough isolation uh, with those for your recording projects as well. Um, so that's how I closed off my list. Um, now, again, Lewis definitely added a lot more in his. Oh, when you moved mine, man. Yeah, you definitely did, man. I was I was really impressed to see the control surface edition. That was a that was a good call. And I didn't me, think you'd when you were when you were first telling me uh, some of the interfaces and stuff you were looking at. I didn't think you'd have room for a DAW in there. So I was glad to see you're able to to work out Studio One. Come on, man! Now, I'll tell you something. Yeah, now the the close off but the close off budget for mine was. I'll tell you now. Hang on one sec. I don't think I think it was it was right one thousand pounds and ninety seven pence. Yeah, and mine was one thousand one dollar and eighty two cents. So obviously I won. Now, that. granted, now definitely. Um, here's the one thing. Um, I did not leave. I was trying to leave fifty dollars or so in there for cables. Um. Now, granted, I, I I guess I would be over by fifty dollars if you add the cables. But um, you know, again, the, these things are all variables. You know, and get you can you could probably find the the Rocket Fives on sale somewhere at a great price. Um, you know, I know a lot of places have buy one studio monitor, get one half off. You know what I mean? I think Guitar Center just had a sale like that. I think. Yeah. Um, also, uh, you can um, in some places. The uh, some places like the what is it the the three things that I mentioned, which was the monitors, the interface, and the reflection filter, and sometimes mm -hmm. even a microphone. Sometimes they do that in a bundle for like yeah. five six hundred pounds, and obviously that's a big big sale. So if you ever see that, yeah, sometimes it's worth it. I bought a bundle once to get one thing out of it, and thought you know yeah like, yeah yeah. So you mentioned yeah, I'm, I'm gonna spend like an extra. 20 pounds and i'm gonna get an extra like three four things so i thought mm -hmm. well i may as well go for the bundle because it's, i'm just gonna I'm, fair enough i don't use the stuff that's fine but it's there if i want to use it do you know what i mean or if someone wants to borrow something it's there right and a lot of those bundles too come with all the cables to connect everything too exactly man um so that's yeah so that's another great way to save money um and you know what just uh just throwing this out there um you know, again, one of the reasons why I deal with Guitar Center so much is back when I was first starting out in my career in my late teens, early 20s, um, I worked for Guitar Center uh, in their pro audio department for a little while. And I can tell you that um, they have great sales during the holidays and a lot of these studio bundles. Now, of course, things have been different, uh, you know, from the time that I was there way back in the day to now, but they were even offering a lot of these custom bundles around the holidays. So 
you know, if it's if it's approaching the Christmas season, keep your eyes out for those kinds of things because I know they offer them a lot during the holidays and they have new things that are just exclusive for Christmas time and you save a ton of money. So just like anything else, you know, when you buy a car, you buy a house, you buy, um, you know, what the hell ever, you, you, you shop smart. You know, you look around, you find the best prices. If you want to go used on the stuff that I listed in my cart, I guarantee this thousand dollar budget would be five, six hundred dollars used. You know what I mean? So that's one of the things you have to think about. Are you willing to roll the dice, take the risk, and buy used and hope for the best? I mean, granted, you know, some places and some people will guarantee things for 30 days used or whatever. So, you know, it's it's just it's a personal preference and a choice on what you want to do. And if you want to get a bigger bang for your buck, maybe you can look at getting a microphone used. I can certainly tell you, you could buy the SEX1 used for the price of the Magneto new. So, you know, or even cheaper. So you can get a, definitely a, a next step up as far as microphone quality for the same price if you are willing to purchase it used. You can get a pair of Rocket, uh, the KRK Rocket RP5s from the previous generation, uh, a pair of them for the price of one single monitor new. So again, you know, it's all relative to what your feelings are on, on purchasing used gear. But I'm definitely a major supporter of, of used gear. I've been buying stuff used for years um you know not just vintage stuff too i buy new stuff used as well newer stuff at least i mean microphones <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> right but um yeah i mean i i've got used microphones that are newer uh that i picked them up because i hadn't used them before and i wanted to try them so i bought a couple of them and if i like them i'll go out and buy some new ones um and keep the used ones as well you know it's once again, it's all preference. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I definitely think this gives you a, a good picture of what you can do with a limited budget and build a complete studio. Now, again, one thing that we each have to say is this is under the assumption, by the way, that you already own your own computer and that your computer is of quality, speed, and spec to meet your interface and software requirements. So that is one thing for sure we should each mention um, because I know Pro Tools has its own set of system requirements that you need to meet, um, as does every DAW and interface. So obviously you're not going to buy a FireWire interface if your computer doesn't have a FireWire port or if you can't put a FireWire card in it. So those are things that you need to obviously have, know what your, your needs are, and and buy based off of you know what you have and what you can support and and what your uh you know abilities are as far as computing power um you know connectivity and such so again that goes back to the whole theme of this you know buying the things that you need based off of your situation yeah man just want to add to add to um the, the buying the used thing or buying anything really me and nick obviously we've used quite a lot quite a lot of different products so if you need mm -hmm. any help or anything along the lines of oh should i get this should i get that then you can just obviously hit us up at any time um, yeah absolutely as for the road microphone i didn't go too in depth on it because i'm we're we're gonna do like a little sort of like 20 minute special podcast just to focused on on road because obviously yeah you might have seen on facebook or twitter that road sent us some some jackets and stuff so big up road for sending us them yeah definitely and we will continue using road as will as I think if you're going to get a microphone and you want decent quality, you should get an NT1. Yeah, for sure. You know, I've been uh, a road user for years, and uh, several years ago, I opened a uh, small video production house as well. And I mean, the very first thing that I bought uh, after I bought all of our cameras was Rode shotgun mics for for you know the the location audio and sound. So I mean, Rode is is great, uh, a great company, top to bottom with all their stuff, studio and for video accessories like their their new video mics they have. I mean, just great stuff. So so definitely. You know, big shout out to Road, and uh, we definitely suggest you guys check them out. Um, so, I guess before we close this week's episode off, man, um, I know on our first episode we each covered three of our favorite plugins. Um, now, from this point moving forward, we're each going to do our own plugin of the week, um, and it's usually a plugin that we've been using a lot that week, or we've used in a session and we got a really cool result out of it. Um, you know, so I think we're going to go ahead and. 
close off here uh, and from here on out with our plug-in of the week. So do you want to go ahead and go first, man? Yeah, man. Uh, mine is the Tape Stop by TBT. I've just been using it this week. I haven't actually really used it on anything like major. I was just sort of messing about with it because sometimes I know probably me and Nick, if we both get a free bit of time, we just like to mess about with stuff and projects mm-hmm. that we've got of our own and stuff. So yeah, I was just using the tape stop. Um, and I was like, right, this is pretty cool, man. Like it literally sounds like what it's meant to be. It sounds like a tape slowing down. But the good thing about it is if you're like, uh, say you've done like a rap verse or, and you want to cut the beat, if you smack that on, the bit of cutting out, it's like, and then as it comes back in, it sweeps back up again. If if you program it that way, so obviously, right. yeah, try it out, man. Instead of just having like on your rap verse, just having the beat cut like rappers do, obviously, cut it, but put the tape stop on the cut and then bring it back in. And trust me, you'll get good results, man. But I've been using that a lot this week. It's quite simple to use. It's literally just the case of. There's a line on there and there's two other lines that the the the, the process is happening. And you basically put the third line within the other two lines as to where you want it. And you can obviously hear back what it's doing before you process it. Yeah, man. It, the tape stop is such a cool effect. I mean, I think it's really timeless, especially when used tastefully. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's definitely cool. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, I chose to... Uh, to share with you the Poig Child 660 uh, from Waves. It is the Waves version of the Fairchild 660 compressor limiter um, that uh, was modeled after Jack Joseph Puig's uh, personal 660. Um, now, first off, Fairchilds are ungodly rare to, to find in existence today. And when you find one, they cost like $40,000. So, I mean, they're incredibly ridiculous, um, but I, I tell you what, it's one of those things, again, um, you know, I mentioned the, the Kramer Pi uh, in the previous podcast. It's just one of those plugins that, that has a color, and, you know, it really works when it works. You know, it's it's one of those things that if you, if you want that coloration and that tone, it works. Now... You know, as far as parameters go, uh, just like many other compressors and limiters, um, you know, it, it has the input gain threshold, time constant uh, adjustment, which is essentially the release characteristic, and the output gain. Uh, now, personally, for, for most modern applications as far as pop, rock, hip-hop, um, setting the time constant uh, past above two is is way too too long for most practical uses. Um, you know, I usually keep it at one or two when using it on things like, uh, you know, some vocals, uh, especially background vocals. I use it on a lot. Um, I use it on strings and piano a ton. Um so it's definitely really cool. And the great thing about it too is if you pull down the output gain and drive the input gain, just like in analog gear, you'll start to notice more coloration the more you drive the input gain. So the so the more signal you're inputting into the plugin, the 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 more coloration that you'll get out of it. And of course you can switch off the uh the the mains for the analog characteristics as well. Um or you know switch between 60 and 50 hertz or turn it off. Um so yeah, that's uh that's my plug-in of the week, the Pui Child 660 from Waves. Um I'm going to be honest with you Nick, I haven't got anything to say about that cuz I haven't actually used it before. <laughs> um but I know but obviously having the Waves bundle, I've got it, but I'm definitely going to check that man cuz I don't think I've actually I might have done. But you know like because we use so many plugins, man, it's hard to right. always, unless it's one that you're using like weekly, it's hard to mm-hmm. remember. Like I always remember plugins more on visual, like on site, seeing it. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. So yeah, I, I mean, might, it, I might it's, it's cool. It. Yeah, definitely, man. I, I definitely suggest uh, next time, especially uh, strings and piano are some of my favorite things. Bass is also a lot of fun to play with on the the Puig Child, and you know, also it's 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 cool too because this is available to use in mono and in stereo applications, um, which is great because you know 
one of these hardware alone, like I said, is like thirty thousand dollars. So to own two of these in in you know real analog hardware to be able to use them on stereo tracks like synths or pads or you know stereo string samples, whatever, um, you know, it's a great thing to have this and be able to use it on multiple tracks in a session. And I think Waves has done a great job on on modeling um, you know JJP's personal six sixty. Um, I've mixed sessions that were recorded with both vintage 660s as well as modern um, emulations uh, of 660s, uh, you know, hardware, custom builds and such. And I tell you what, this thing falls right on par with it, man. I really dig it. So definitely worth checking out. Definitely, um, man. We, like so, we said last yeah. week with Waves, though, they, they've got, like, the best emulations. I'll say it time and time again. Anytime we bring up a plugin that's been emulated by Waves, I'm going to say how good it is. <laughs> yeah yeah definitely that's why i'm still i'm very excited for the for the dbx 160 to drop man and i'm very excited for this to happen when is that do you know when um, that is? what's that when is, do you know when that's coming out oh remember. um no you know what i don't actually and may, i'm gonna have to tweet them later and ask them when they have a release date for that um because trust me the day that i get uh get that plug in i'm definitely going to do a uh, a video on it for sure and i will make sure that that is my plug-in of the week no question so right. anyway i think that before uh, we close hang on Nick. yeah one, one, one thing before we close i we forgot to uh bring up actually we both forgot but Software wise, DAW wise, uh, Avid are bringing out a free version of Pro Tools. <laughs> yes, Pro Tools first, correct? We forgot that. So, obviously, um, if you want to try Pro Tools before you buy it, so really that just blows Nick's out of the water. Uh, if you, <laughs> yeah, if you want to buy it, bef- if you want to try it before you buy the, the full version, then you can sign up for that on Avid's website to to they email you yeah. when, it's, when it's dropping man so you'll be able to just check that out download it i think it gives you 16 tracks to mix also features their new online collaboration thing i don't really know too much about that because i don't really use pro tools but it sounds sounds pretty big man yeah you know the 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 new features um with pro tools 12 um you know, I think one of the coolest and most exciting things about it is the new uh, online collaboration and the marketplace. I mean, it really, I mean, from my own personal opinion, at least, it feels like they're bringing uh, the the musical community together and almost like a social networking production, recording, mixing environment because you're able to collab with people so much easier. Um, you're able to share your 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 work with the, the Avid community and get feedback and get other people involved in tracks who you never may have met before or had an opportunity to work with before. So it's a really cool feature. So I'm really excited to uh, to get my hands on it as well and start, uh, start playing around uh, with the, the new features. So uh, I think that does it for for this week's episode of Inside the Mixing Vault. As always, check us out online. You can hit me up personally on Twitter at Nick Battistone. You can find my personal website at www.nickbattistone.com or email me at The Mixing Vault, Nick Battistone at themixingvault.co.uk. And uh, Lewis can go ahead and give you where you could find the Mixing Vault online. Uh, well, bro, I've got a new one for them this week, you know. So you can go onto Twitter and you can at me, at Lewis underscore TMV. Yeah. Or you can obviously follow the Mixing Vault, so at the Mixing Vault. We've got a website, you can check us out, uh, themixingvault.co.uk. And my personal email is lewismillard at themixingvault.co.uk. Yeah, man. Also, I should add to... Um, my personal email address is nbattistone at gmail.com. So for anything mixing related, uh, questions about booking me, things of that nature, you can send that there. Any audio questions and things pertaining to the Mixing Vault or audio education, send that to Nick Battistone at themixingvault.co.uk. So that wraps it up for this week's installment of Inside the Mixing Vault. Oh, uh, yeah. Make sure you stay tuned. You can now subscribe and download through iTunes, correct? 
correct? Yes, you, there's, man. Uh, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, so so that's a great feature. Um, so we hope you guys are uh, starting to dig what we're doing. Obviously, this is going to continue to progress and build and get more involved and hopefully more entertaining and educational at the same time. So just uh, you know, stick with us. We appreciate you guys checking this out. And we will be back next week with a discussion on DAWs. So until then, I am producer, mixer, and engineer Nick Battistone. I'm producer, mixer, and engineer Lewis Millard. And we will check you guys out next week. Have a good one. Lay off.